you have every right as a creative freelancer to ask what their budget is. Mm. They mm -hmm. may not know, but they know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They yeah. have a number because yeah. Emily will tell them. Emily will ask, "Okay, well, is it? Does your budget like two hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars?" And they're like, "Oh, oh my, no, it's 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 five thousand. You're like, yeah. "Oh, look at that! You had a number. You had wow. a number." Okay. <laughs> Welcome to The Practical Filmmaker, an educational podcast brought to you by the Filmmaker Institute and Sunscreen Film Festival, where industry professionals talk nuts and bolts and the steps they took to find their success today. On today's show, commercial photographer duo Emily and Corey Kritzer from Lanewood Studio talk about the options they faced when leaving the film industry and how film guided their experience in a brand new space. Find the full transcripts and more at thepracticalfilmmaker.com. I'm your host, Tanya Musgrave, and today we're talking to Emily and Corey Kritzer. Together they run Lanewood Studio, a commercial photography company based in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they shoot marketing photos for ad agencies such as Arc Worldwide, Johnson Group, and the Vayner Company, Stasha Group. Welcome to the show. Thanks so hey. much. Hey. Hi. <laughs> All right. So this is a little different uh, than our normal format for the podcast, and not just because there's two of them or because there's also an adorable baby, if you can see on the video, but um, uh, because unlike our other guests, you guys have decided to actually step away from film, uh, but because this is a practical podcast, I wanted to explore the questions we sometimes do when it comes to when or why we'd ever decide to step away because that's valuable too. Um, so why don't you guys outline your your experience from from film uh, and through film to where you are today? Uh, I studied film and television at Savannah College of Art and Design. Uh, that's where Emily and I met. We did this in Los Angeles together working separately on odd jobs. Emily, what were you doing in LA? I worked for a stunt coordinator director and was on a producing track. Um, I met this one woman who was a producer. Her husband was a showrunner. She owned businesses. I thought she was so cool. I was like, I'm going to be this lady one day. And then I realized she didn't have time for kids on the weekend. And there's mm -hmm. no water. <laughs> um, it was a great place to be, you know, in your 20s for a while and learn a lot. But we really wanted to work together. Like, we met. Um, mm -hmm. And... So we did a 100-day road trip around America and looked for a new city to move to to start a company together. Mm. Um, and we landed in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And why did we get into commercial photography, Corey? Why did we make the switch? Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> you we guys are natural. Were, <laughs> we were, um, we were work, working separately, and uh, I was trying to climb the ladder in the film world to get to what I thought was going to be a director. And that just, you know, sh dream shattered when you get out to L.A. and realize that's going to be a long road. Uh, mm -hmm. And I had a good time. I learned a lot, like, um, yeah. like as you do. But we realized that, like, you know, not seeing each other all the time and working long hours was just going to be really hard. And then mm -hmm. I worked, I got an opportunity to work with a photographer on an ad campaign when a friend of mine had to leave town. And I just got to be on a photo shoot for the first time like a real professional commercial photo shoot. And I was like, whoa, this is so different. These people mm. are really breezy and cool. There's music playing. Mm. No one's hollering quiet for sound. Mm. No one's like hollering about with the schedule. It's just, it's just breezy and cool yeah. and fun. And I was like, yeah, I yeah. looked at that photographer. I was like, I want to be, I want to be that guy. <laughs> I want to yeah. do that. Yeah. And he also worked with his wife. So I thought that was really cool. I was like, I think we can do this actually. So mm -hmm. we decided to do that road trip around yeah. the country, find somewhere else, that, somewhere that was in a better quality of life, somewhere cost of mm -hmm. living was a little bit easier. And yeah, uh, we found a spot here in Chattanooga that just fit that dream. And it's been going really well. I think there's a lot to, um, you know, so we, we knew that we could start a commercial photography business, um, you know, at, a, at the top scale, a lot easier than we could start, you know, a top scale film um, business because mm -hmm. the, the gear is just easier to get into. Um, mm -hmm. you can take on more projects and, yeah. you know, also moving to the Southeast, we were given <laughs> so many opportunities here, um, yeah. that we weren't given in other places. And that let us grow as, as artists. Um, you know, really, we, could you, could you give me so, an example? Yeah. For, yeah. Um, so we, so we did this 100-day road to Brown America, right? And we photographed and camped in 40 national state parks. Um, and we looked for a new city to move to. And, but we 
after the road trip, we got back to LA. We sent out emails to and and promotion. We were gone three things. months. Three months. Everybody <clears throat> that we worked for before had moved on. Mm-hmm. Um, totally we sent forgot out, us. You know, I, I don't know, probably a hundred to different people, and we didn't hear back boo from mm. anybody that wanted to work with us. And and so we decided to move to Chattanooga. And I mean, um, we tried. We sent out promotional. We yeah. did the same thing here. We sent out promotional materials. We walked into businesses and. Within the first year, I mean, we were we were running and gunning. We we got so many opportunities, mm-hmm. say from um, the Chamber of Commerce, just the the small business um, communities here, and and mm-hmm. so because we got opportunities to shoot to get hired, we got gotcha. better. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Um, you yeah. can do yeah. You can do personal projects all you yeah. want, and that's great for your promotion. But unless you're actually like getting those jobs, showing that like you can do the job. Mm-hmm. And that's just like yeah. what you weren't getting the opportunities as much as in, in LA, I think. So well, and and yeah. it's the same way in film is, um, you know, since we've been able to, you know, shoot more and shoot all the time, and now we can kind of pick and choose what we want to do and and who we want to work with, and mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, and, you can do that yeah. in the film world as well. It's yeah. just you know you're jumping from project to project, and you're not always the one in charge of what goes on yeah. yeah yeah and i you know in general film is just more of an expensive thing you have to have more people involved like you know it's just kind of the nature yeah. of it you you know you have a whole entire crew i mean and i i know that photo shoots can require a lot of crew too but yeah. you don't need three different people just to run the camera you know it's just different right for sure it's totally different mm-hmm. yeah and and i love being on the film sets when we were on them i loved yeah. having that family bonding of like a three month long adventure together and yeah. now we're just kind of doing that but we're doing so you like guys shot a weeks. feature together we did we did yeah. a um first and second ad on a feature film okay. yeah the space jockey pursuit right out of uh <laughs> okay. right out of college she was okay. still in college actually yeah. and yeah. then uh the last thing we did in la was produce a short film for our friend sean mm-hmm that was tremendously. It difficult. turned out really great. It turned out it turned gorgeous. Out great. The production I mean, was, it was beautiful. We did what we could on no budget. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> on a yeah, low, yeah. No or deferred budget. It won awards. I mean, it was. It good. won awards yeah, and it yeah. did great. And we were like, that was fun. And I just realized I was like, but this isn't. This just isn't where I want to be. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. what's fun about the commercial photo world or the photo world over the film world is, you just you know. I, having an ADD mind, it's great because you get to do so many different projects. You know, uh-huh. we can do three projects in a week. Um, you know, mm-hmm. the turnaround time is faster, yeah. which is just really fun because you just keep getting to meet new people and have yeah. new experiences. Um, yeah. But a project can be done, you know, in two days or two weeks or two Well, months. it takes like, you know, it, ta- it could take like a month Depending to put the, the whole – Depending on the scope to put the whole yeah. job together. Mm-hmm. And it's so fun to see out there. The more projects yeah. you do, the more you see out in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And that's really gratifying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? And um, and having a party on set is really, really fun. <laughs> we try to have a party. You know. Yeah, yeah you, I can, I can, on a shoot I can vouch party. for that. I can vouch for that. I was able to assist uh, for them for a day and it was a blast. And very, very chill, like they were saying before. Super um chill. So you were uh, like, so you guys are predominantly just photography, not film. No, no crossover, or um, or do you um, do you do for ad agencies? Are they like uh, parallel with other films going on, or not films, but like commercials? There's a blend right now of photo and and video called you know the term is motion, right? And okay. it's gifs, it's um, stop motion. So we do a lot of stop motion for. Um, you know, especially social media accounts Mm -hmm. where, you know, and it's really simple because you have your strobe set up, you have your item and, you know, it can just kind of dance or do something or, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of tickle the imagination. Well, Um, you've seen, you've seen like Vanity Fair covers in a a store and you also see them on like Apple News Plus where the model's now moving a little bit. Okay. Yeah. So the photographer is doing, we don't call that like, we're going to shoot a video or a commercial. We're just doing motion. Mm-hmm. So now we're just going to turn off our strobes, flip on our, we call them hot lights, but everything now is like LEDs. So, but, uh-huh. or the pho- photographers call them continuous lighting. Oh, okay. <laughs> I still okay. call them hot lights. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, yeah. so you flip those on and then you've got, you know, your motion ready to go. And having mm-hmm. our film background, having our that skill, being able to just flip it really quickly does give us the advantage on some jobs. When they're like, we want to also do video, we're like, yeah, we can throw in some motion. 
Yeah. But if yeah. you want like a full on ad, like we're gonna we're gonna need a whole crew, photo mm -hmm. crew, film crew for that. So there's some crossover, but it's not it's not like I mean, and sometimes you will see a huge huge like Honda. Uh, ad done where you have like the photographer shoots the all the still campaign for Honda's new line and then that photographer can also shoot uh, direct the commercial mm -hmm. he can be the cinematographer for that and director yeah. and just get a camera operator run that so then Honda's client or Honda as a client gets everything done at once yeah and that's pretty appetizing to to them okay so when you're talking about doing motion I remember that there was mm -hmm. a trend going around that was, it was, it was very odd. It wasn't stop motion, but it wasn't just a, it wasn't a video either where everything else was completely still like a photograph, but there was one oh, thing a that was a cinemagraph. Okay. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. video that and you it kinda, shoot. Yeah, it trickles your mind. But you pause everything. You mask out everything you don't mask want Mask out moving. everything else. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Is that something that you guys do as well, or do you, do you kind oh, of yeah, cross over yeah. in that in that area? Okay, I would say that's that's. I don't edit that, but I. Sh I can and this is an you. interesting world, you know. I mean, we do consume a lot of high end film with all of our yeah. streaming and binging, but there is a lot that we watch that's so short, mm -hmm. and a lot of advertising has to do with tiny little bits, and mm -hmm. and so. I think we're really good at those tiny bits. That's kind of what we great do. Those little bits. I love <laughs> yeah. I love shooting like these headphones look great as they are, but it wouldn't be fun if they danced off the table too. Yeah. <laughs> and it's fun. It's so fun. I think that there was this one, okay, so there was a photographer that I used to follow. His name is Jeremy Cowart. And he's no, national. He's good. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just an artist in a lot of senses of the word. Um he'll do fine art and all that fun stuff too. And there was something that he did it was called a litograph, and mm. it was mm. kind of like what that is. And I, I forget, I, I know that he was, I don't know, probably selling a workshop on how he did it. I don't know. But it was specifically about, um, it was a video that wasn't a video, the same thing that it, you know, from before, except for what was changing was the lighting setup. So it was, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, yeah, just a still photograph and but all the of the lights move. Yeah. All the lights are moving or all, you know, it's not a GIF. It's not a video. It's not a photograph. It's like, it's a, it's a lightograph. It's, it's something completely yeah. different. Yeah. So visual and, and practical crossover, there's that. I was curious about some of the things that did translate well or some things that didn't translate well from film to photography? Something I've seen in the difference between like photog most photographers and most filmmakers mm -hmm. is I feel like most filmmakers generally have a, a concept of light. I do find a, a large education gap with a, most photographers I meet. Um, hmm. They know their lighting. camera. They know their camera. Ooh, they know natural lighting. Forth. But I think something that we brought that separates us from other photographers is our concept of, you know, an entire production, putting something mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Well, it's having the skills to say, like, okay, we need to do this portrait, but it's storming outside and we don't mm -hmm. have any natural light. And like, I can, we can have the skills to create mm -hmm. a sunset shot. Yeah, we had an yeah. assistant, an old assistant here on Friday, and he was remembering um, a shoot we did in Denver in 2019, where it was January <laughs> in Denver. Um, it was cloudy and there cold. There was snow on the ground. <laughs> there was snow on the ground. And we had to create a summer scene. We were shooting um, ads for this. They outside. were going to put out in summer. And we yeah. were like, oh, my gosh. So, you know, we, <laughs> we, we knew what to do. We got the AstroTurf out. Models. Rake you know, the snow just away. Like, <laughs> rake the snow away. AstroTurf. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. models were, like, ready with the jacket. But otherwise, you know, we had a hard, bright light um, with... Some warming gels on it. Warming gels on it, you know. CTO. And, and so it looked great. It looked great, you know. The guy was, like, sweating from summertime football. and um, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so, so just having those, being able to go into any scene and knowing how to light, no matter what your conditions are, um, I think yeah. is something that we brought over from the film world. And, yeah. And, and, and telling a story. Um, well, in the gear, know, in the gear, too. I mean, you have to use that gear. Yeah. So when you come over from, even if you're, uh, whether you're a PA on the set or um, assistant to art art department, you are mm -hmm. familiar with gear. You just mm -hmm. you just know what a C stand is back and forth because yeah. you mm -hmm. see them all the time and you use them. In a lot of 
photography just starting you just don't get that opportunity I think so mm -hmm. you're just used to light stands and bounces and that's that's mm -hmm. fine and yeah. a lot of people do uh, have a wonderful career with just mm -hmm. natural light and, yeah. and mm -hmm. I think that's fascinating but having the ability to use this mm -hmm. gear is pretty great and I love it. I feel like the <laughs> film world is more open to yeah every every kind of technical tool available and in, in photo just I don't know I yeah. kind of feel like sometimes they use more of the minimum. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's like neat, but yeah. I think that's true. Like, I'm like, I, I mean, until my clients look at the screen going, I love this, I'm going to keep adding stuff and yeah. keep trying to and make it And we have strobes awesome. and we have continuous lights. Um, we have kinos. We have a, a sky panel, you know, and I mm -hmm. think that's something that a lot of photographers aren't familiar with. Gotcha. Are the, gotcha. Know, Ari and Kino, but um, yeah. yeah, yeah. there's so much you can do. And yeah. being able to switch over from photo to motion. Go to a um, photo, go to a festival. Yeah. <laughs> Play mm. with the gear. Yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> it's a good time. Yeah. So you're talking about the integration of film between like the film industry and the photo, just like having to do with gear. How about the the business side of things? Um, like bidding. Bidding is a big thing. Mm -hmm. Bidding is a big thing. I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't do any bidding when I was in film okay. and TV. It was yeah. just, God, I hope there's something good on entertainmentcareers.net or, <laughs> yeah. you know, someone's got Mandy. something for me. Yep. Mandy.com. Yeah. I was yeah. all over it. I know as a, like a director, like you just, you, your name gets passed around. You should mm -hmm. use this guy or you, you work for a production company and that production company gets hired to mm -hmm. do the direction for an ad or something. So I'm not really familiar with that side of it, but mm -hmm. I am familiar with, you know, bidding photography, which is yeah. I would really say, challenging. I would say so the, rewarding when you win. The, the biggest thing is, is learning how to hustle. Yeah. Your time is absolutely an asset mm -hmm. that you need to take and, and figure out mm -hmm. how you can grow your business. We started out with the Small Business Development Center. We went there. We got classes. We learned QuickBooks, um, you know, streamlining mm -hmm. our business mm -hmm. and just hustling. I think the film industry taught us to to network, to hustle, to, you know. That's just, true. That 1,000%, that's true. Yeah. You learn how to get You got to talk about yourself a little bit. You yep. got to mm -hmm. yeah. you gotta spend your time doing the things that are going to lead you to what you want yeah. to do. Because yeah. being a freelancer is, it's a certain kind of thing. But you can mm -hmm. do really well. You can, you can <clears throat> succeed. You mm -hmm. know, there are resources out there to help you. Coming from film versus photography, learning how to bid was definitely a a new skill that you had to develop and legitimizing yourself mm -hmm. in a way what were some of the resources that you went to to uh yeah to create a legitimate front to when, when you were putting in bids you well, gotta go to festivals mm -hmm. that's where we we met some wonderful people at a um the palm springs photo festival and it's just a, it's a great gathering of fine art photographers and some commercial photographers. And you just meet people and you just talk, you just ask so many questions and don't be embarrassed. Like, I'm like, dude, licensing, I have no idea what I'm doing. And they're mm -hmm. going to be like, yeah, no, nobody really knows. And that will lead you to the resources that you need, like potential agent who may not represent you. Yeah. But she may do a, a one-off if it, the job is big enough. Mm -hmm. And... You just keep those people in your pocket. Just talk to people. There's so many aspects of legitimizing yourself, too. I think one mm -hmm. thing, like in the first year, we learned so many things, right? I was mm -hmm. talking about the Small Business Development Center. Yeah. I went, I took a QuickBooks class and mm -hmm. it was like $100 and I learned how to, you know, write an invoice and mm -hmm. because that's usually, I don't know, we didn't learn, we got our bachelor in fine arts and they didn't teach us how to write an estimate. Yeah. And, and yeah, yeah seriously. So there are resources even <laughs> yeah. locally, no matter mm -hmm. where you are in the country. Mm -hmm. One of the best seminars we went to at one of these festivals was by an amazing photographer, top of the field called Arch Streber. And he mm -hmm. shoots for all of the, you know, huge magazines, every celebrity. He does like Vanity um, Fair, Entertainment Weekly yeah, covers. Yes, so we had a, we had a seminar with him and, and I asked him, I said, you know, if there was one superpower you have, what is it? And he said, my systems. Hmm. Look around, look at your systems. How can you do things better? 
Are you, do your invoices look good? You know, mm-hmm. um, look, looks are very important, you know, especially mm-hmm. in a, in a, in a visual world. If you want to be a professional, you gotta, you gotta play the part. Mm-hmm. Do your invoices sure. look good? Does your website work? Do your emails have like a nice signature? Mm-hmm. How are you presented? We, we went with Lanewood Studio over, you know, Corey Photography or whatever, because we thought people would think, Oh, a studio. They must be a lot bigger than they are. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so mm-hmm. they just want, you know, something small. We can do that. But if they want an entire production, it sounds like we're bigger. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So besides coming up with the name and turning down certain gigs, how did you position your company to be able to get higher bids or even know where to start? Mm-hmm. You've got to send promos promotionals out to agencies that you think you'd be a good fit for Mm -hmm. and you have to show them that you can do a big shoot without the direction from an agency Mm -hmm. they want to see that like oh your own personal mind what you've done what you come up with is uh just as good as what an agency might be able to come up with Mm -hmm. They may not hire you that day. They may not hire you that year. But if you send them over and over and over again, three years later, hey, would you like to bid on this job? The budget's $250,000. It's for Shutterfly. Mm -hmm. And you're like, (gasps) and it's like the big whale. You finally got it. And you're scrambling to get your agent together and everything. And you bid. um, But sending up promos and going to portfolio reviews, you can always work on yourself. And you've Mm -hmm. got to sit through and have someone critique your work for you. Critiquing whether you're in film or photo or fashion, any kind mm-hmm. of art critique is the most important thing that you're going to do as an artist to get better. Mm-hmm. And it can be really brutal sometimes. And people yeah. will tell you, you aren't marketable. Yeah. <laughs> and they say, I, only partially I don't agree. like this. I, I only partially agree that. And that's fine that you do. We've been, we've been back and forth. The point of our this. success. I think, I think, <laughs> I don't, think, getting, it's, the, I don't I think, think it's the point of our success, but I think it has led us um, to some big jobs. I think, what has led to big jobs are taking on Sorry, a we'll couple of personal <laughs> projects. I think it's taking a couple of personal, personal projects life. that will lead to yes. bigger things. I think mm-hmm. that's helped us more than I think so. portfolio reviews. And I, I think, think so. that also what has led to, I, I think a really big way to get a big budget project is to have, <laughs> to have the balls to bid high. Um, I think yeah. sometimes mm-hmm. people, you know, get a big shoot on their, radar and they get so scared of losing it that they bid too low Mm. you have to be ballsy enough to to bid appropriately you You know if it's gonna take yeah uh tens of thousands of dollars it's gonna take tens of thousands of dollars well there's so many factors that go into it and uh, our first quote we didn't just throw that number out there i mean my first quote that was like a big number i was sweating i Mm. was sweating i was freaking out because i had no idea are they going to go for us am i worth this much is the work Mm -hmm. i'm going to create that valuable yeah. And there's just so many factors involved. And then uh, really what helped us go to that next level, I believe, was having uh, finding our um, part-time agent. Okay. And um, yeah. she's, she is just a fountain of knowledge. She was like, you got a big job, come to me. And then I'll just call her all these questions I have. I'm like, how do you know that? She knows, you know, she knows the market in all the different parts of the country. Mm-hmm. And I can ask her anything about that. Mm-hmm. So you guys had mentioned your agent before and how she's your part-time agent. Uh, well, I'm, I'm curious how that works, number one. And number two, where one would find an agent um, and what she does for you. All right. I'll tell you real quick how we got connected. So we hired an expensive marketing company uh, called Workbook. Okay. They, um, they represent photographers. It's just a broad marketing company. Okay. Um, through that, we met a producer there who suggested we go to a Palm Springs photo festival and show our work and go to seminars. We did. <gasps> While we were there, we met a really dope photographer who said, uh, who we got pizza with one night. And he said, we asked him a bunch of questions and he said, you should just ask my agent. And I said, how do you, how, how was that? How can I do that? And he just gave me her information. And, um, so knowing him, uh, led us to her. Gotcha. And then um, I didn't contact her. I was too scared <laughs> to just <laughs> cold call, reach out. I have questions. Yeah, uh, But yeah. we got a really, really, really big job offer that we didn't know what to do with. Um, it was with 
a large ad agency out of Chicago. And okay. I, it was it was such a big offer. It was so out of the blue. We thought it was a scam for sure. <laughs> yeah. so, wow. Someone called us for banking information to add us to their account for accounts payable. We were like, uh-huh. yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> Are you also a prince? Yeah. And then the producer called uh, and said, no, they weren't supposed to call you so quickly. So this is real. And uh, the bid was just the bid alone. Uh, per, the request for proposal was like 20 pages. Oh my gosh. Uh, what they were expecting and what they wanted. So we called her and uh, she was a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'm happy to do this for you. I do this all the time for, you know, one offs for people um, mm-hmm. that I like. And uh, she liked her work enough and liked us enough that she was uh, willing to do it. Mm-hmm. Wow. 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 And so she put together the proposal for you or. She does all the negotiations. Oh, okay. So she, we do, we're responsible for the proposal, our okay. approach, and um, she just suggests numbers that we should have. I'm like, what should my price be? And she says, okay. well, for what, she's like, what do you charge? I'm like, well, I, this is my price. And she goes, okay. well, in this area, it should be this high. I think what was so valuable about her was um, her saying, you know, oh, this number needs to be higher, this number needs to be higher, because if it was too low... We wouldn't be taken seriously. Yeah. That's right. And she said, uh, I said, well, how do I know? She said, well, in the Chicago market, you might be this, you might be like uh, 5,500 or 4,500. In New York, you might be 6,500. You're down mm-hmm. in Tennessee, Chattanooga, mm-hmm. Atlanta area, it might be around 3,500. It just depends on where you're shooting, who you're shooting with, and what the mm-hmm. market will bear for that area. Yeah. And uh, so she put, she just throws numbers out there and she just, yeah, uh, it was really, really helpful in putting mm-hmm. that all together. And it's just something you just don't learn in school. Yeah. You just yeah. learn by assisting photographers. It's always yeah. changing. Yeah, the market is always changing. And she talked about that a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Well, we had talked about this a bit, too, Emily, just about people talking about money and being mm-hmm. very open about about rates. I mean, I, I know that we had, we had mentioned this story before, but I had I had a mentor in LA when I first went out there and uh, a little bit down the road, he was saying, I like, you are in direct competition with me and all the advice is just, I'm just going to have to go dark on that for now. And I, I was shocked, you know, I mean, because to a degree, I mean, you want to be able to talk about rates with other people so you don't undercut the industry, number one. And right. Sure. Which is a problem in some areas. Yeah, yeah. And and then and additionally, I mean, these days I think people are getting more more comfortable putting their salaries and their rates out there for, you know, just just to bring attention to even just like pay disparities or, you know, all of that fun stuff too. But mm-hmm. I mean, when you're entering into an industry, it's very important to know kind of like where you stand, but like maybe where you belong. I don't know, you know, like maybe along those lines of just like, hey, yeah. until I learn how to do X, Y, Z, I shouldn't probably try or I, I don't know. I don't know. Like uh, uh, in any case, I, I always find it extremely valuable to find people who are willing to talk about rates on this podcast, which is why, I mean, everybody who I have on here uh, before we start rolling, I ask them, you know, where they are <laughs> on the spectrum of comfort level <laughs> sure. to talk about this kind of stuff. So it's um, that sensitive. Well, yeah, yeah so, I mean, some people want to keep it close to their heart. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not telling every single person I meet my rates. It's just not something that comes out. But if, if yeah. someone's directly asked me, what do you charge? I'm like, well, mm-hmm. that's a big question. Yeah. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> what am I doing? I don't know. Some for some jobs we can be, we could be really high on that spectrum. Mm-hmm. We could be around like if I can do if I can pull out five grand for a full day shoot, I'm happy. And that's just mm-hmm. your creative. Fee. That's just the creative fee um, with retouching. There's uh, gear. There's then there's a bunch of stuff you can add on. Um, you know, if you, you you should be able to charge for your gear because it's expensive. But mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff then there's items you put in your bid that are negotiable stuff to throw out. Mm-hmm. That's what my agent told me. She said, mm-hmm. uh, we'll put your gear in there. We'll set your gear at 1200 a day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, what if that's like, that seems high for what I'm bringing. And she's like, it's just something to throw out. Mm-hmm. In yeah, case they're yeah. like, hey, this is too high. And she's An like, great, we can just no mix to. that. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can always add that stuff in. If you feel like it's, mm-hmm. if I'm bringing more gear than I initially thought, then I'm going to add it on there. 
but there are a lot of people like in the smaller markets who are, just don't have that kind of budget. Mm-hmm. So you got to cut everything down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And you got to find what you're comfortable with working on. Like if you're entry level photographer, mm-hmm. you don't have a big portfolio, you can't go out for 3500 a day. You just can't. Mm-hmm. You can't start there. That's too mm-hmm. high. You can start around two. What? 1500 2000 a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Depending I think on how that's good fair. you are. <laughs> it depends also how good how, you are. <laughs> you know, and I think I think the reason we get a lot of jobs, um, the reason that we win a lot of bids, I think we put out a really good product. But the other thing is organization. People can tell that we're going to be on time. We're going to be communicative. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of business and organizational aspects, I think, that can put you above other people. With, mm-hmm. uh, with big jobs, every bid comes with a proposal. Mm-hmm. And Emily does a gorgeous proposal, and it is, mm-hmm. it's very long. It has uh, a lot of pictures. A lot of pictures. It has like who we are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what the job we're doing is. What I got. Our, I, I what I our went approach online. is gonna be, and yeah. how we think we can accomplish the shoot. Who we think your what your brand is. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can share it with you later if you want. Um, yeah. But I went online yeah. to a, you know, graphic template website and mm-hmm. I got a brochure and I just changed it. I changed it to, to say what we have to say, mm-hmm. because in the commercial world, the person you're talking to is probably not the person making the decision on whether to hire you or not. Mm-hmm. So systems and looking professional, it mm-hmm. will take you far. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what range of bids could someone who's entering into this field expect for pay? Like, and this was, this is for the, um, for the shoot. Is this for like the project? And this is, I would, I would say more along the lines of motion for these purposes, if that Mm -hmm. ends up being more or, you know, um, if there is any integration with a film studio, like that is coming alongside you or, you know, like what that even looks like. A full day shoot for us can range between, I would say, thirty five hundred and maybe about five thousand to about. I mean, you can go up from there twenty thousand a day if you mm-hmm. have full crew models. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can do a ninety thousand dollar photo shoot, mm-hmm. and your cut is like uh, a fifth of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you have so much travel and crew and crew to pay for and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then honestly, when it comes to just bidding, it, a lot of what I do is just gut. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know, <laughs> I know people don't want to hear that. <laughs> you got a tough gut. Yeah. I, no, you gotta, well, if it were yeah. up to me, we'd probably still be making pennies on the dollar. Yeah. I, cause I look, I look at the brand and I'm like, okay, this is a big brand. I know they have a lot of money. Yeah. This looks like an annual shoot. So they do this every year, meaning they're only going to use it for a year. So, and where mm-hmm. are they going to use it? Oh, these are mm-hmm. going to be in like total wines around the store or around mm-hmm. the world. Or mm-hmm. is it just going to be North America? And I'm like, this, this number. And I, and, I, and I ponder that number and I have sleepless nights over that number. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. I submit it. <laughs> we've been lucky enough to get lucky enough you get it now it's great to have an agent because she can just she can like negotiate on your behalf for you and you can change that and sometimes people just look at that number and go oh you're not for us okay Okay. i'm like well i'm happy to i always say i'm happy to adjust to stay competitive Mm -hmm. that's a good line yeah yeah that is that is i am I want mm-hmm. to stay competitive. But if the competitive market is like thousands of below me, then I'm like, maybe this isn't the shoot for us. Yeah, for and sure. And then you just you just walk away. You yeah. Know. Refer it to somebody. We refer you. it. Ooh, yes. And that's still that's still useful too because they can still see you as a resource too. And I'll tell you this for everyone listening also. You have every right as a creative freelancer to ask what their budget is. Mm. They mm-hmm. may not know, but they know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They yeah. have a number because oh, yeah. Emily will tell them. Emily will ask, "Okay, well, is it? Does your budget like two hundred dollars, two thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars?" And they're like, "Oh, oh my, no, it's 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 five thousand. You're like, yeah. "Oh, look at that! You had a number. You had wow. a number." Okay. <laughs> and then ask them, "What are they going to use these for?" Mm-hmm. To help you, you just ask a lot of questions. It seems yeah. like annoying, and you're, you're worried you're going to lose a job, but it's important to know, like, wh- mm-hmm. what are these going to be used for? What, what's your budget? 
Uh, what are your expectations of me? What's going on? I think a big takeaway for our filmmakers is definitely not to shy away from communication because there is there's a lot more uh, that can be asked that a lot of people they don't think that they can or that they're allowed to. So I think that's definitely something that can yeah. that can cross over there for for sure. So now I want to ask about the tools of your trade and what is your favorite gear or gadget that is an old reliable or a resource or what have you. But uh, we, we like to go with the old standby first. <laughs> oh, my okay, gosh. So that is a – for those listening – that's a tattoo Corey got about two months ago of a C-47. Oh, my it's gosh. My <laughs> it's my favorite tool. <laughs> I have never seen that before. Let me see it again. Besides my camera, it's one that I use all the time. Yep. <laughs> I'm always using them. That's amazing. And it's just funny. Yeah. Yeah. And I always keep them on my sleeve when I'm working, so I grab them. So, like, grab literally grab right where your things. tattoo is. Like, you hook it, like... It <laughs> yeah, that's why it's there, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got these really cool new lights. Ooh, that leads me to the next question. Uh, your favorite new gadgets, you know, like the, the latest purchase. Oh, yeah. We got these wands from Godox that are surprisingly bright, and... Uh, so these are so we have we have kinos we have kino um, kino freestyles but these are really cool Corey just bought these they're wire they're wireless nice you know it's like a wand you can change here you tell them about it I don't really know much yet oh, I'm not like endorsing like, Godox I though I do like Godox <laughs> Godox Godox this is the one you know it's got it's it's RGB so it does all the colors and then it's got uh, it's got really fun modes like lightning storm. <laughs> I like to use don't this do one. That to the baby. Well, Jones, don't look this way. <laughs> but it's, we're doing an eye. Pro, we're doing that macro eye project. So we wanted we wanted some lights that would be really thin that we could put close to a subject without making a really big catch light in the eye. Oh, nice. So that's my new favorite. That's my new favorite toy. Okay. Wand. And it's great, too, for, like, doing ads where you just need, like, a little microwave light or you're in the car and you need a little car light or something. You used to take keno tubes out, you know? Yeah. And just connect the keno tube by itself. With its, mm -hmm. now, you, now we have all this wireless LED stuff. It's, I mm -hmm. sound so old when I say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's Back okay. In the days. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. Like, the, the newest, like, the Titan tubes were things that were, I, I'm just like, are you kidding me? Are you actually kidding me yeah. that they have this kind of technology these days? And the kids, like, they're there with their iPad and they're they're controlling every oh, the, single yeah, one of on them their on their DMX on their DMX board. controllers. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, uh, I I'm so far behind. This is why I ask everybody for their favorite. <laughs> this is all I yeah. keep up to date. <laughs> so, yeah. all right, another favorite question that I have is a story of when something went wrong and what you did to fix it or grow from it. Mm. Hmm, so many to choose from. Hmm, I can tell you one, one photo shoot. I've never been rained out on a shoot before, <laughs> except one time. I was just thinking about it the other day. It was, we had this whole photo shoot planned, and it was all outdoors, and it was a big crew, and a lot of money, and, oh, then, yeah. and then a storm, <laughs> storm came. In Kentucky? Yeah, and we were like, Oh, yeah. Um, okay, how do we spin this? Instead of just sitting there and staring at rain, um, it was a lifestyle campaign for, um, for a client that needed a library of images for their, their own personal stock photo. So they just wanted models mm -hmm. like, interact. it was a, like a farm, farm kind of style. Mm -hmm. So people living and working around a farm and farm life. And I was like, okay, what can we do in the rain? So we, instead of just not doing anything and just twiddling our thumbs, we shot scenes, rain scenes. Ah, so gotcha. it was like kids jumping in puddles of mud. Um, we shot, um, them playing in the rain. We shot like a macro of water on plants and you just find opportunity. You have to find opportunities mm -hmm. when things are failing Yeah. because if you don't, then you're not, you're just not being a very good leader. Yeah. You gotta be, you gotta keep everybody like positive, even though you're no, like it's all going to hell in the hand basket. <laughs> <laughs> Moral of that story is get a really, really, really good crew. Mm -hmm. We brought on a really great crew. I think why we have trouble, 
I mean, things go wrong all the time. I, it, you know? it is always because of crew. Because there was another shoot that I bought. I had, I, this is dumb, but I had no idea that there, there's like CF cards for mm -hmm. cameras. And then there's something else. Uh, a C fast oh, card or yeah. something. <laughs> so I had, I got this camera and I got this big cine lens. And then I got these, all my CF cards out that I rented and none of them fit. Oh. And it was the day of the shoot, and I was like, oh, we don't mm. have any cards. So I sent a very great assistant to go buy fistfuls of SD cards. Yeah. And mm -hmm. all they had was 32 gigabytes, and we're shooting 4K. So I had like eight 32 gigabyte cards. So mm. having a good crew mm. who will have your back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and in that, I run remember, to Best Buy for I remember you. on that shoot <laughs> in the pouring rain, we really wanted a, a, a tire swing later. So our, oh, we've yeah. got. Girl, this girl is the most badass lady I know, and she's a rock climber, and she was our assistant that day, and she shimmied up a tree in a thunderstorm <laughs> and rigged up a tire swing with all of her rock climbing stuff, That's and amazing. I told her not to do it, but, like, all of her clothes also <laughs> are just – all. she always wears um, waterproof clothes. Nice. You know, just, like, sweat. Yep. She also so. rigged it in a way that you just – it was like an alpine kind of rig where you could just – pull it off yeah uh, and you didn't uh, have to climb back up yeah yeah, yeah exactly yeah. They, were like, they were like we like it so much we might keep it and she's like well you, you gotta pay for all the gear i just yeah. used so i think like bringing on really good crew that you can rely on you know yeah. and has a good attitude and just yeah. like you know isn't gonna bring down the mood because the mood is so important problem mm -hmm. solving is a is a special skill to have in what mm -hmm. we do mm -hmm. um yeah. you also found this was a same client. They were a problem. It, it was, <laughs> they were was a problem. A, they wanted they, about they wanted dirt bikers for a scene, and we're like, I oh yeah, they I told me the day before <laughs> that they had to have dirt bikers, and I was like, oh. you cannot tell me this now. But anyway, I contacted a local dirt biking uh, company. I, there was there was a dirt track, and so I called the dirt racing track, and I was like. Hey, do you know anybody who might be able to come and race dirt bikes around this place for the shoot? And they're like, uh, now we're in like, what was it? <laughs> Something Kentucky. Versailles? We're in Versailles, Kentucky. No, yeah. it's called Versailles, Corey. Sorry. My cousin's from Sorry. Versailles. It's Versailles. not Versailles. Okay, it's Versailles, Kentucky. <laughs> Versailles. We are in Versailles, Kentucky, Got by an hour outside of Louisville. And um, yeah, so I called the dirt bike people. He's like, I don't know anybody who could do that. I said, well, do you have any dirt bikes, sir? <laughs> and he was like, well, I have a couple. I mean, what? And I was like, I will pay you $400 cash, <laughs> 200 up front, two at the end. And guess what? We showed up. There were four dirt bikes, kid bikes, all this crap. They he got were it legit. all. He's like, it's real dirty. I said, good. They wanted uh, it authentic. And so, you know, whenever I walked up to him, I said, here's your 200 now. I'll give you 200 at the end. And they were the best people. They're better than models we would have hired. Yeah. So and the I client, know it's, the it's client had no idea. Trick, they were like, cash. oh, great. You found dirt bikers. We're like, yeah, it was so easy. It was not, but uh, you know, a, a good thing is saying I will pay you cash. Like that, yeah. that works pretty well. She's an well. awesome producer. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna I'll we're gonna have cash. lots of conversations in the years to come. I hope you guys know. Just just throwing that yeah, out. <laughs> but cash. Um, I uh, I do have a question to wrap up. What questions should I have asked you? Great. Ooh. Uh, How do you manage a family? How wow. do you manage work-life balance? Okay. I don't know. Um, it's hard. It's, Babysitters. Mm -hmm. Do not work in the – you can't you can't work in the same place that you live, mm. whether that's the same room or same area. Mm. So we have our studio. Not everyone has a studio. I get that. Mm -hmm. But there's a room where you work, and then mm -hmm. there's a room where you just have, like, your family time. First of mm -hmm. all, we don't talk business after 6 p.m. because mm. – we try not to, unless it's a really, really big job and they've got deadlines <laughs> like the next day and everything's going crazy. And I need to get a dirt biker. And I need to find a dirt biker. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we really just don't, we don't, we try not to talk work after six. That's just family time. You mm -hmm. have to have that time to just set aside to relax. And we met this photographer in another Palm, Palm Spring Photo Festival. His name's Sandro Miller. And uh, he has his work area is in his house, but it's upstairs. And he says mm -hmm. when he comes downstairs, no more work. No more shop talk. No more work. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's just mm -hmm. being able to separate that from um, your your work life and family life is important. If I'm yeah. getting work emails from someone at 1030, mm. someone better be dying mm. because I'm not reading that Or email. there better be a lot of money. Or there attached. better be a lot of money. I just mm -hmm. don't. I don't do work emails that late. Mm -hmm. no. Because there's nothing. Yeah. 
that important that I can't get, I can't wait till the next morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Unless it I, shoots the next morning and, it, and you're telling me that it's canceled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if I, or or if it's I a call be, sheet. You can send call sheets anytime. If yeah. I can be <laughs> candid about it, I personally, my opinion is that in the professional world, it's pretty unprofessional to send work emails at 2 a.m. Unless you absolutely have unless to. Unless it's a call sheet. Like if somebody mm-hmm. sends me an email at 3 a.m., I look at Corey and I go, this person's crazy. They're the ones that don't have families and they're single. I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. It's okay. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm a night owl. I'm a night owl. You gotta, do what, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's true. It's true. It's true. Yeah, Emily, it's true. why are you judging people? No, I just, I just... No. I'm just saying, you know, when you're working with corporate America. This is true. I don't know. No, no, no. When I had my nine to five, I will say I left I left work at work and there was nothing yeah. that could make me check a work email um, past those hours. As right. a freelancer, it's a bit it's a bit harder for me to kind of draw those mainly just because I, I am a night owl. So I end up staying up late anyway. But um, but I get it because you're like, that's you're, my unpopular you're hustling, you're hustling for it, and that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's great. Just yeah. but if you have like if you have a family, I mm-hmm. think like we do mm-hmm. with two kids and, and a dog and all that, it's yeah. a lot to manage. And I yeah. if I don't separate those things out, exactly, I, it's just, it's nobody just, will. Well, you can't separate it entirely. I have kid stuff all over my studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Trucks like, everywhere. This is Caleb's daycare when it's not being used for work. Yeah, a yeah. two-month-old and a two-year-old. Yeah. I don't know. We're figuring that one out. I don't out. know. Was that a good – was that a good – I don't want to judge people. I don't want people to feel like we're, no, we're like no. uppity. You know, I no, just I have no, to keep no, it separated. No, I, and I think here's the thing is that we we actually talk a lot about this, about work-life balance and boundaries. And there's a, a quote that I, I love, and it is that rest is a discipline just as much as work. <laughs> oh, and I like that. Rest yeah, and it's something that should be worked for. Well, the mental creative mind is a muscle. And mm-hmm. it also needs time to rest or else yes. it can't repair and, yeah. you know, grow. So how do people find you or follow your work? Lanewoodstudio.com. Just one studio, no more. Uh-huh. L-A-N-E-W-O-D-S-T-U-D-I-O. We also have an Instagram. You guys, thank you so much. This has been an amazing conversation. Yeah. I think it's I think it's really great to explore the edges of our career if we want to expand or not expand in that particular direction. Yeah. But I think knowing the options is really important. So thank you so much for your insight. Thank Absolutely. You. Thanks for having us. It was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this interview, follow us right here and on Instagram. Ask us questions and check out more episodes at thepracticalfilmmaker.com. Be well and God bless. We'll see you next time on The Practical Filmmaker.